you know what? When it comes to people trying to feed information about what other people have to say about us, it's always about me. It's always something to indict me or persecute me or make me look like a horrible human being. Do you think I give a damn about something that happened years ago? That's something I apologized for and I did my best to make up for. And I thought the other person forgave me. Do you think I give a damn about that after I lost everything I ever had to that said party? Do you think I give a damn? I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn about who says what says. I don't give a damn. Here I am doing my best trying to put my fucking self back together. So I don't have to feel like fucking ass anymore. And I wake up and I get more fucking information. Guess who said this? Guess who said this? Guess who said this? I don't give a fuck what someone has to say about me. Most of the shit they say is bullshit. Do you get what a smear campaign is to someone who's psychotic? Someone who's holding a grudge for something they shouldn't be holding a grudge for. They got everything they ever fucking wanted from us. And I have to wake up every goddamn morning to this fucking bullshit. And then people expect me to be online. No. I'm not going to be online when people are feeding me bullshit and acting like there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Something wrong with my soul. Mm -hmm. When I did absolutely nothing wrong. I've done a lot of soul searching over the last few years. A lot of soul searching. And I'm not going to apologize for the things I've done in my past because you know what? I'm sick of apologizing for the things in my past because I wouldn't be who I am right now if it wasn't for the things that happened to me in the past. The past is nothing but a memory. It does not dictate what the now is, what, what this Time is. It just shows a reflection of the things that built you to who you are right now. The past is dead and all we have right now is now. And all we have is these goddamn demons trying to do everything they can to put me in a place where I didn't feel good about myself. I ain't going back in that place. I ain't going to reflect over the things that made me who <coughs> I am now. That isn't real anymore. That's just a human experience that was meant for then, not now.
there's nothing that anyone can say that will take my faith of Jesus Christ away from me or the shields that he gives me every day. You keep coming at me, devil, with the past. You're this, 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 you're this. No. No. All I was was a woman trying to figure out why I'm being so wrong to by someone who said they were who they said they were and they weren't. They lied. I don't care about my past. I'm who I am now. And I know that I'm not going to be who I am now in the future. People change. They move on with their lives. And there's really something wrong with someone who wants to keep you stuck in the past. Because that tells me they want me to want to prevent me from moving forward. And that's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to move forward whether they like it or not. And I want everyone to be influenced by this too. Whenever anyone tries to stomp you down with your past, you remind them that the now is all there is. And all, all the past is, is just a shadow of who you became now. Words of the past don't bother me. I dealt with them. I dealt with them internally and externally. Words of the past don't bother me because the faults that I had then are not my faults now. For I know I am a being of growth. You can't go to a big tree that was once a sapling and tell them that you remember that dry spell you had? Yeah, you're never going to be a big tree because of a dry spell. That, that, that doesn't happen because that's not true because you're literally talking to a big fucking tree telling the tr big fucking tree that it's never going to be a big tree when it's already fucking grown. That's who you're talking to. I was once a sapling. Now I'm a big tree. The only thing you can do is take your weapons of mankind and saw me down. That's the only thing you can do to defeat me. And even then, you can't really defeat me because... I'm an eternal being living in a non-eternal body. You can't beat the eternal. See, you're still looking at the Shannon who lived in her flesh. I don't live in my flesh. I live in my spirit. Every day I live in my spirit. How can you go to a, to a big tree and tell them they can't be a big, uh, they can't be a big tree because they were once a tiny sapling through a dry spell? It's illogical. Like it is now trying to throw things at me 
over and over and over again. And you throw things at other people. And they may go. They may go, but they will come back. Because my spirit is greater than your spirit. Because my spirit isn't dead. Your spirit is dead because you focus on things that are dead. And Jesus Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. So enjoy your funeral of the past. Because that's all your group is, is a giant mass of death worship. I'm not that. The only thing the past is good for is to remind us of what not to be like. It's the only thing the past is good for is a lesson. And there's no lessons to be taught by me, <coughs> by you, a merely human being that has no power of God. If you had the power of God, maybe I'd, I'd, I'd look at your words as something. But you have no power of God. Do you? No, you don't. You don't, do you? You have no power. Because the greatest power is love. Something you lack and you need in your body for you to understand where I'm coming from. I am no longer the Shannon of yesterday. I am the Shannon of today. Just like you're no longer you of the past, you are you of today. If you are stuck in the past and you keep reflecting on the past, you have not learned the lessons you should have learned. You are in a cycle of trying to figure out what it means. You think hating me will solve the problem, but my dear beloved ones, that's not how you solve a problem. Look within yourselves and you will get the answer you need. Okay? Externalizing your hate toward me will not fix you. Only when you look into the internal yourselves will you realize what your goddamn problem is because I know it's not me. I am a free shanty. I am a shanty no longer chained and bound to her past. I let it go. Amen. I let it go because it's not mine anymore to hold on to. Let it be an esper. Let it be an esper. A lesson to be how not to be. I'm proud of myself that I have grown from the inane. I'm proud of myself and I'm willing to let things go. 
And I'm proud of myself that I'm no longer lashing out at others that deserve to be lashed out on. I'm turning the other cheek. I'm being of God. And I'm loving God. Because God deserves the best behavior from me. All the times I was not on my best behaviors, all I do is I reflect on that. And I realize all the times I hit Jesus Christ. Because whoever you hit or swipe at, the least of these, you do unto him. Every time you say a bad word to someone, every single time you you lash out at someone, every single time you hurt someone in some way, it is a, the equivalent of hurting Jesus Christ and taking a whip to his back and just whipping him with the cat of nine tails. That's what you do every time you sin. I don't want to do that to him. He's worth way more than that for me to hit him. And I want you to reflect on that, too. Just remember, every single time you swing at me, you're swinging at Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is my stronghold. He is my protector. He is in front of me. He's taken every single stone you try to throw at me, and he's taken it for me. Have at you, enemy of God. Have at you. You want to keep on swinging at Jesus? Keep swinging at me. I don't care. I know he can take it. Allah is most sufficient. And not only that, he's most graceful. He gives you so much grace that you think you can get away with everything you do. But in the time of judgment, that's all going to end. All your little games, all your little evil stuff you like to do, it's all going to end. All of it is going to end. The devil will be defeated that day. <clears throat> and you're going to realize how much you worked for Satan that day. And shame on you for that, for not repenting right before the Lord comes. You deserve everything you get because your heart, your heart is aligned with Satan's to destroy, to hurt to maim, to lie to, to lie to others. If you think you're doing such a good job and all you're doing is tempting the Lord each day to cross your name out of that book of life, shame, shame, shame. Shame on you for that. I don't... I don't understand why people have to go through such dark roads before they find the light. My road has always been very dark... 
But now I don't have to worry about that. I got no people around me except my husband and my key cats. And I'm happy and content with that. Because I know these people won't intentionally hurt my heart. That's correct. It says in the Bible to protect your heart with all due diligence. That's what I do. I protect whatever's left of my heart because the world beat it up so bad. But I'm no longer in the world. I'm outside of the world and I'm just a mere observer of the world. Frankly, I'd rather the world be like Animal Crossing where it's just a bunch of animal people going around doing their own things and helping watering your crops and everyone's working together for a good purpose and that is just to survive and live. I'd rather live in that world. And make the island pretty. And make the <laughs> island pretty. Yes. That sounds good to me too, man. I'm with you. I'll come with you to the Animal Crossing Island to live in real life. Or even Stardew Valley World, <coughs> where people are just fixing up their farms, living their life, and, and really trying to fix their internal problems that they have. And they all do at the end. They all do. Yeah. <laughs> and then everyone celebrates. I'd rather live in that world. This world of darkness where everything is consumed with such heaviness, I don't, I reject that. I reject the world of all the evil they put out in it. I reject it fully. There's no way anyone anywhere could could take away what I truly want. And that's peace, harmony, amongst nature. The realization that I am one with nature as well. That the animals are my friends, they are not my enemy. And there's nothing to fear from animals unless they feel threatened. Then you should be a little fearful. But if you're in harmony with nature, there's nothing to fear. I'm not that person that wants to lash out no longer. I learned that lesson. I learned that lesson through love and through understanding and through internal, internal thinking of who I truly am as a spirit and realizing my spirit would not like that type of behavior. See, who I am internally is a peacemaker. I am a child of God. I let the world come in and just wave me to and throw. No longer. I focus on God and God only. Do you know when I sleep? All I do is, is internally hear songs of God when I sleep. That I'm bathing myself in God's glory when I sleep. Because all glory belongs to him and only him. 
For we are just mere vessels here on earth to just give a little part of him and just show it to people. A little... That's all we do. That's all our purpose is. Is to love God and serve him. That's all our purpose is. Because that's what he created us for. Is, is to love him. Follow his commandments. And serve him. To be his friend. To be his confidant. I mean, isn't that nice to know that God made you specifically just because he wanted some friends? I would, I would assume you would want to serve him right after knowing that. That he just wants some friends. Real friends. Not, not friends that are forced to go along his will. But friends that are willing to want to be his friend. And I am willing to be his friend. I want to be God's friend. The devil lost. He lost a long time ago. It just took a while for us to catch up. <sighs> exactly, Matt. God will always be your avenger because he knows exactly how to avenge the right way. We mere humans do not know how to avenge right. We do it meanly and spitefully. God, on the other hand, when he puts his avenging hand down, it's always for a lesson. It's always to teach people how to be better. That's why he is the Father, the Father. And all I am is a mere vessel coming down and just telling just a little people, just love him. See what happens in your life once you give yourself to God and love him. And by loving him, you have to love others. You have to love your enemy. And you have to learn how to put the sword down, Peter. My sword's down. My arms are out. And I'm fine. Let's see. I'm physically ill at the same time. I know that there could be a time sooner or later where I could just drop down to the ground and meet the Lord. My heart isn't very strong anymore. But I know the Lord is sufficient. I know the Lord has my back. And I know he loves me and you guys so much and you don't even know it, how much God loves you. God helps us eat when we have nothing to eat. He helps us be able to get what we need to survive and to feel better about our lives. God is sufficient. And he will send his servants to do what they need to do. 
So if you're going to judge me by the things of the past, that's fine. That's on you. But it does not reflect who I am now. We all have a past. The only difference is mine got broadcasted. That's okay, though. I broadcasted my flaws intentionally to show non-believers that even though you are messed up and you feel you're not worthy of God, you can still have God. I did that right after I became a believer from an atheist because I knew internally that was my problem on why I was an atheist. I didn't feel like I was good enough for God. I thought I was unworthy. I was a woman full of fornication. Full of fornication and hatred for the people who wronged me. And God took all of that away. I'm no longer a fornicator. I, I, I protest it. And I'm no longer a person of, of, of a mean, ill spirit. God turned my heart of stone into a heart of flesh. And he allowed my heart to break to show that my heart is fleshly and not full of stone and not full of hatred. And to help me for and to help him too to shine more better through me because only a shattered urn can show light through. My past is done away with. And I will not hold on to it. Because it's a dead man's yoke. And God took that yoke and he put it on his own neck and said, Come on, I'll take this burden from you. And he did. And praise God, he did. Praise God, he did. And he'll take you. He'll take yokes from you. He'll take burdens from you. He'll take flaws from you. And help you get better. For he is the one and only physician. There is no one like him. And no one that ever will be like him. He took my yoke. He took the burdens of my life. I may be poor. I may not have any food. But there's one thing for sure. I have God. And he'll keep me from being hungry. He'll keep me from feeling thirst. He'll keep me from feeling anger. I give it all to him. A Flawful, imperfect being, I give it all to God. And I thank him for taking my burden. That's all this was about. All this he said, she said thing, that's all this is about. Because God will be glorified in this. 
not me or the other parties, God will be glorified. For he deserves the glorification, not me. I'm shit compared to God. You have anything you want to say, hon? Uh, uh, internally, I'm really angry with one person. Because I don't understand how somebody could provide for you so well and you continue to slander them. You know what we did for you when you had no one. Well, maybe wiser. Maybe you had wiser. But whatever wiser did, what did we do for you? And once again, it's not from us, it's from Jesus. So what did Jesus do for you? And then you spit in the face of the vessels that Jesus blessed you through. I'm confused how somebody could be so disgusting and call himself a believer in Jesus. I'm confused as to why the Lord told me to do that for you because I feel deceived by him at this point. Pretty angry. And that's all I got to say. Peace and Maranatha.